In this video, I will discuss seven tips and tricks which would help you master task stack that query. Let's get into it. The first thing we will discuss is the query options function. Query options has been introduced in Transta Query version 5 and is an amazing utility for reusing your query keys and function. It accepts the same params as the use query hook. So the result of this function can be passed to the use query hook to make a query. Because now all query client methods have the same type signature, you can pass these options to literally any query client function like prefetch query, refetch queries or cancel queries and it will work very smoothly. The next thing we should keep in mind is the query keys hierarchy. Right now we can see that I've got three queries and each query starts with the prefix posts. Because of this, if I just pass the post keyword in a function like refetch queries and call it, all these queries will be refetched. As you can see here, if I click on this button which calls the refetch queries function, all these three queries get refetched because they are grouped together by one specific keyword, post. But let's say now I've made a mistake and instead of prefixing my query key with the word posts, I have written post. Now if I click this button, you will see that only two queries get refetched and not that previous one. So using a common keyword in the start of the query keys can help you to perform operations on multiple queries. Similarly, you can also prefix query keys with a code which indicates a part of the app like home settings and you can use the same method to maybe invalidate all queries in the settings, etc. Now, as I showed you in the previous section, hard coding strings in query keys can result in mistakes. So a better way is to use a query key factory. So in this case, you can see that I've created an object in the all key value pair, I have the keyword to do's which would basically group all these together. And then I'm reusing this query key all in other instances as well. So for list, I'm reusing all for list by filter because the query key would be similar to list. I'm reusing the list query key. And for find by DN details, I'm reusing the all query key. And basically this makes sure that the query keys of a particular resource are consistent and there isn't any mistake which can be introduced when we are just using hard coded strings. So that is pretty useful. The next thing I will want to discuss is synchronous queries. In order to make a synchronous query, you shouldn't in all circumstances use the use query plus use effect combination, but instead use query client dot ensure query data. Ensure query data makes a synchronous query to the backend if the cache isn't present, otherwise would pick the data from the cache. This approach is also the recommended way to make synchronous queries. Whenever a mutation happens, we should update the data for the respective query in the on success function of the mutation. This would make sure that whenever in the application this mutation is called, the respective query would automatically be updated and you wouldn't have to manually update the query data and the components where the mutation was called. And this is a pretty reusable and scalable way to do this. As seen in the previous example, refetching queries is okay if the data it would bring has a small size like just an object or maybe an array with some objects. However, it is a way better practice to update the cache manually using set query data. Normally when you are creating or updating a resource, you are getting the updated object back from the backend. You can basically take that object you get from the response and mutate the cache locally instead of making a refetch request every time you create a resource. That is it for the video. If you like the video, make sure to smash the like button and comment down your thoughts about the video. As always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.